So what is this new normal? Your conference will discuss the new normal, learning about it and adapting to it. I think it's a very important theme in today's world. It reflects both the urgency as well as the demand of our times. We have, in my view, two key challenges. One, the challenge that we are living increasingly in a climate risked world. So what is the new normal in this climate risked world? And what are our strategies to cope and adapt to it? The second challenge is that we are living in an extremely inequitable world, a world where poverty and marginalization is growing. So what does sustainability mean for this world? How can we build sustainability if there is no inclusive growth? This is our second most important challenge. And so what then is the new normal in these circumstances? First, let's be clear. The world is seeing a completely changed reality. Today, weird and extreme weather is the new normal. In my country, we say flood at the time of drought is the new normal. Why do I say this? In this last monsoon season in India, we have had 16 events where rainfall in a single day has crossed 200 millimeters. What does this mean? It means that an entire city, whether it's the city of Mumbai, the city of Chandigarh, the city of Bengaluru, could have got up to 30% of their annual rainfall in just a matter of hours. It is no surprise then that they drowned. It has meant that many parts of India have got floods because of extreme rain and at the same time many parts of the country are under drought because it hasn't rained at all. So it's variable rain, it's drought at the time of flood. Look at this map that we have put together to show the number of extreme events that have happened just this last season. And remember, this is what climate models have told us will happen. This is what each model has predicted, that you will get more extreme rain and that you will get more weird weather. What should worry us is that we are at the beginning of the trajectory today. This is only going to get worse. So it is this new normal that we must understand and we must begin to cope with, to deal with. It is an important lesson for water planners. And at this conference of the Water Research Commission, it is important for us to evaluate, therefore, what does this new normal mean for a water secure world? The fact is that you will get more extreme rain and you will get more variable rain. So a society's ability to hold that rain, to recharge groundwater so that it can cope in the long drought period is going to be critical. But it is also a fact that the only way to deal with flood is when we can distribute the rain. We can find a way to be able to spread the flood water so that it can also recharge the groundwater. So this is really where the opportunity is. The past lessons are very clear. In India, we've had a very rich tradition of holding rain where it falls. We had an extremely ingenuous uh, technological uh, sophistry in which we would in each region of the country, hold water 
in diverse ways. But the principle was the same. Hold water where it rains, when and where it rains. Hold it in a distributed fashion. But over time, we've lost this wisdom. We've lost it because we believed that we could hold water in large reservoirs and then channelize it across the country. This is not good enough today in a climate risked world. Every water channel, every drainage channel, every lake, every pond are the sponges of our countries. We will have to learn to hold the rain, recharge the groundwater, and to use this so that we can build what water secure societies. This is really where I believe the new normal has to be understood in a climate risked world. But this is one part of our challenge. The other part of our challenge, as I said, is that we have learned today that growth, affordable growth can only be sustainable. This is our new normal. Take wastewater. Today, most of our cities, and I would imagine this is the same in South Africa, certainly in large parts of Africa, cities are struggling to contain wastewater so that it does not end up polluting either groundwater or surface water. So what we have is a situation where we can supply water to our cities, bringing it long distances, but we do not have the financial abilities in our cities to take back the same wastewater and to channelize it, to pipe it long distances often, to be able to treat it so that it is clean enough to discharge in our rivers and our water bodies. All this is adding to pollution, all this is adding to our health burden. The fact is our cities are not rich enough first to build to supply and then to build to take away the waste. Huge numbers of our people are not connected either to clean water systems, not connected to sanitation and certainly not connected to underground sewerage. Large numbers of people of our people are not serviced. Now, in this situation, to think about a modern waste management system where everybody's waste will be intercepted, treated, cleaned at a certain cost is not going to happen. Now, this is the new normal. The new normal is to accept our reality and to celebrate our reality, not to believe that we have to get rich and only when we get rich, we will have a modern sewerage system. We can have clean rivers, we can have sanitation for all, even when we are getting rich. CSC has been working on what we call shit flow diagrams. I show you this diagram and as an illustrative diagram to be able to Make, to help you to understand that for city after city, when we have done these diagrams, it shows that the bulk of people in our cities are actually using what is called on-site treatment. What does on-site treatment mean? It means that they are either, their toilets, if they have them, are connected to a well-built septic tank or they are collected only to a box, which is called a septic tank. Or in many cases, they are connected directly to a government pipe, to any pipe, to a water body. Now, this is really the reality that we have. But the reality and the mindset of our water engineers, of our sanitation engineers, is that this is old. The modern is, the, the underground sewerage system, which will connect every household, which will lay sewers across the city so that we can pipe and pump, channelize, intercept, treat and clean. In my country, at least, the reality 
is now being understood that this will not happen because even as we lay underground sewerage for one part of a city, another part of a city emerges. We have large growth that is happening and the catch-up game is never getting completed. So what can we do? What then in this situation is the new normal? Just consider. We take today our flush toilet, which is seen as the marble, marvel of modern engineering, takes a little bit of human excreta, uh, takes a lot of water to flush because you require water to carry the excreta and then it is treated and disposed of again in the water body. But the fact is, this has meant the destruction of the nitrogen cycle, the global nitrogen cycle. Because human excreta is what we take from the land, the nitrogen that we take from the land through the food excreted in our waste, which should go back to land. Now, if we were to think about the modern sewerage system for our modernizing cities, it would actually look like this. It could be that you would build on decentralized water harvesting systems through lakes, ponds and other water reservoirs distributed so that you would capture the extreme rain when it falls. This Water would be supplied more locally, which would also mean that you would get citizen participation in ensuring that the water is not contaminated. It would also cut the cost of the pipeline to supply the water. But then you would also take the sewerage system so that it is distributed, decentralized. Each house has an off-site uh, system where the waste is collected or the excreta is collected, the fecal matter is collected. Um, that septage is then taken, regulated, so that it is taken to a treatment point where after treatment it is put back on land. This is the new normal for our sewerage system, our water system, a water secure future for us. We know that climate change is going to add to risks. It is already making the poor in our world more vulnerable. They are victims of climate change because they are not responsible for the stock of greenhouse gases in the atmosphere. But we also know that if we can innovate, think differently, think out of the box, be completely bold in the way we visualize our future, our water future, our water waste future, we can actually find a way of coping with this new normal. This is the opportunity. So thank you again for asking me to speak at this very important symposium. Thank you again for listening to me and next year, I hope you will invite me and I will be there physically with you. Thank you.